This is 2010 for Taurus SHO, super high output. Uh, compression test was low or something wrong with it. And uh, so I took uh, chances and I towed it in my garage. I was gonna do the compression test, but apparently the engine is seized. I couldn't crank it over. Uh, I tried both ways, but uh, not a chance. So uh, instead of compression test issues, I'm dealing with some se more serious issues here. I'll try to bring it back to life. I did a couple of things already here. Uh, disconnected all those pipes, wires, stuff like that. I'm just uh, finishing this engine mount. I poured uh, those special treatment for uh, a gunk in the engine, so I poured stuff like that into each of the cylinders and I let it sit for a couple days. We'll see, maybe they're just uh, problems with uh, stuck rings because the car was sitting at least a year. The last report from the dealership, because this car was uh, serviced in dealership on a regular basis, was low coolant. They top it up and then send the car away. And 300 kilometers later and one year, so 300 kilometers later and one year, uh, the next report says uh, that they actually uh, found the car or the engine was stalling the the car was actually towed in to the dealership the engine was stalling and uh, what they found was uh, a mix of coolant and engine oil in the pan so they drained the oil pan with this kind of weird mix and we all know what that means this part of the engine the middle and the front actually from the point of view is the left side uh, is wet the other side is not and it's wet because there is a weeping hole right here right here is right behind the alternator and any signs of uh, water pump going bad this part of the engine will be wet so i don't know how this could be overlooked at the dealership but uh, it's uh, it is like it is and we're gonna bring this baby back to life maybe it's engine swap when i was just about to give it a last try before disassembling all from the ch uh, time chaming cover i tried to um move this crank uh, one last time and what happened was it actually did move those fluids I pour into those uh, cylinders they probably work it's just the problem with the with the piston rings they got stuck because the engine was sitting for almost a year or maybe a little bit more uh, than a year so it might not be a big of an issue if I use the right stuff to uh, get those piston ring rings unstuck. So I made a little mark here and tried to move it by hand. Ah, that sucker doesn't go. Ah, it goes. It goes now. So Okay, the mark is down again, so I'm gonna give it one more, one more look. Okay, it's down again, so I didn't hear and didn't feel any, uh, I didn't hear any weird noises from camshafts 
or pistons or the valves. I didn't feel any special resistance in any point, so it went uh, nice and easy. So at this point I can say the engine is not seized, it's just those piston ring got stuck by sitting in one spot for so long. It might happen because they pulled the spark plugs out and they let it sit like that. So I believe with some good treatment for in engine oil and also in the fuel system, uh, I can get it back to work and back to life. Yeah, I'm not gonna pause every single step-by-step -step procedure. Only those tricky parts. And I found this one a little bit tricky. There are four 15 mil nuts. Then I believe it's 19 here. Installed with a thread locker, I believe, because they are pretty nasty to get out. This is a little bit an issue. Huh, not a big deal, but uh, you have three bolts. This short one is not a problem, but those two longest one, the top one, is not such a big deal because uh, you can lift the engine up a little bit and get it out, maybe even without it. But if you lift the engine a bit, it, it uh, helps. And this bottom one, you have to lower the engine. So lower the engine to get this bottom bolt out, okay? This is not my idea, I saw it somewhere online. But I, uh, I like to give it a try. Uh, how to actually remove the crankshaft bolt uh, without any using special tools? So I started with one end because I cut the serpentine belt. This is the second end. The first end it's somewhere at this point here, tucked in underneath the other part of the belt. So I started on the top wrap it around clockwise going here and around the chassis and I use the C-clamp to hold it in place see that? and uh, now this is life I'm not prepared beforehand and we'll see we might get this sucker out it's 18 mil bolt give it a try And it's going, I can hear that. The serpentine belt got some stretch. It's like a breeze. So this method actually works. It's pretty stretched out, but it goes out by hand now. All right, now all I have to do is release this clamp. Get the belt off. Removing the crankshaft pulley with three jaw puller. Yeah, any three jaw puller will work. There is enough room. So you'll see those spots on this crankshaft. So once you use something like this, you should be fine. Using those rods according to the length. If it's OEM and tools or whatever, three simple three job puller. Okay, the intake manifold is out. So there are 10 bolts holding it. And what I found is this. Pretty nasty. Direct injected engine. No problem. One like the other. It's the same. Now you'll see better. Okay. Nasty stuff. Yeah, I'm too lazy to take the heads off. Or do it the other way, scrape it and vacuum it. I'm gonna want to blast it. I'm gonna tape those openings for intake and the coolant passages. Pull the intake off, uh, valve covers off. And what I found 
because this chain, this small chain, has a big slack. How can I show you that? This little baby, there is a huge gap. I try to bring the light in here. But you can see it, I can go there no problem. Like it's probably like a six, seven millimeters. And the tensioner might be might be done. The left side that looks pretty pretty solid to me. Pretty good. What I'm worried about is the chain, which will be replaced, of course, but see how big slag it has, and the same here. Uh, see? Uh, the chain can flap it around no problem, and uh, this water pump, actually I can... I don't know if you can see it, but it, it has a play, it should be nice and tight, and I can push it up and down, or to the side. Yeah, I can feel the whole, the big play in there. So the bearing is probably dead, and it affected the chain as well. This is what I found. So obviously, and now you can see it way better. Chain and the main chain and the small chain on the right hand side. I'll uh, perform a leak down test before I proceed because if there is an issue with the, uh, uh, let's say, Head, head gasket, I can I can fix it in this stage.